I think I'll, um, we can go ahead and um, call the meeting of the Southbury Youth Commission to order at um, 7.01 p.m. on um, September 19th, 2023. Um, the first on the agenda is a review of the minutes of the meeting from August 22nd, 2023. Uh, does anyone have any comments or edits to make to the minutes? I did not either, so hearing none, um, we'll need a roll call vote for those. Uh, for uh, Well, we will need a roll call vote, and uh, I'd like to have a motion. I move to approve the minutes for the August 22nd, 2023 meeting. Is there a second? I second it. Yep. Laura just seconded it by sneezing. <laughs> that. <laughs> um, so, uh, Sarah Micas? Uh, yes. Karen Englum? Yes. Laura Chioko? Yes. Nancy Sutton? Yes. Susan Byer? Yes. And Lauren Ritchie? Yes. Next on the agenda is the director's report, Sarah? Our new and improved uh, director's report. <laughs> Let me just find it really quick. Oh, I opened the wrong thing. Okay. Um, let's see. So as several of you know, we did outreach. Uh, this is a, a busy outreach season for us. Um, actually, tomorrow night, uh, Megan and Shannon will be at Trottier for their curriculum night. Um, we've had some visits over to Algonquin, so that's been great. Um, thank you to all of you who helped out with that. Um, there's no way we could be in all three schools at once. Um, and um, I believe this is its own separate agenda item. I'm pretty sure, I can't look back, but I had a chance to attend a select board meeting on September 5th to review our proposals on alternate um, ways to utilize the ARPA funding that we weren't able to use for the clinician position and also the um, because our interface contract came in under budget. So I'll, I'll chat about that separately. Um, I'm super, super excited to share with you guys that our coalition, Encompass, received the Drug-Free Communities Grant. And I just need to tell you what that means because it's a really big deal. Um, so, um, did I, I, I feel like I've had this conversation already. I'm sorry if this is a repeat. Um, but essentially, I'm just pulling up the, the specifics. So we, by the way, we have not made a formal um, announcement that we've received this grant yet. Um, the two towns, uh, Northboro and Southboro, are working together to craft something and to be strategic in uh, making the announcement jointly. I realize I'm saying this on a, a public forum. Um, but so the, the information has been getting out there bit by bit, but we haven't made a, a press release or anything like, like that for it. But this is a $625,000 federal grant um, that will go to both communities. Um, it really helps um, address youth substance use um, and general misuse, even among adults and in the community. Um, we have a, a whole strategic plan that we're, uh, we put together as part of the application. So we'll be able to put that into place soon. Um, it's a five-year grant, which means that we will be receiving $125,000 a year for the next five years. Um, it comes through the White House efficient Office of National Drug Control Policy. And, um, in, in cooperation with the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. So um, 
the one of the first things that we're going to be doing with these funds is to hire a coordinator. Um, most drug-free communities, in fact, all drug-free community uh, communities, that's the first thing they do is hire somebody to manage the grant and execute the uh, strategic plan along with the steering committee. So, um, so there's a lot more to come with that, um, but it's very exciting because if any of you knew our coalition back at its inception, we hobbled along for a really long time. Um, and it wasn't until um, really the Southboro Community Fund put some money, uh, granted us some money to work with a consultant who really kind of whipped us into shape and got us um, in, a, in a place where we could even consider applying for this grant. So um, their investment paid off and we're I'm very eager to talk to them and let them know um, this exciting news. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, been having a lot of discussions with members of the select board regarding the South Union building, as some of you may know, they've been talking about plans for that and um, in, in Doing so, they're also talking to us about our space needs and considering different options for a long term. Um, we tend to be a department that moves from time to time. Um, and, um, you know, it, we're open to the conversation because while we, where we are now is certainly an upgrade from where we were before, it still does not meet all of our space needs. So, so it's been nice to engage in some conversation with them about that. Um, we are having conversation with the school department. Um, the schools are um, rolling out a program called Signs of Suicide, and they're working to train all students across the district from, I believe, just middle school and up on the Signs of Suicide program. And they did it for... Trottier and uh, Melican students last year and this year are rolling it out at the high school. The high school had some scheduling conflicts so they weren't able to do it last year but we had an opportunity to talk with uh, Jennifer Lipton O'Connor who's the social emotional learning I don't know if it's director or coordinator for the school district. Sorry Jen if I'm getting your your title wrong um, but we are going to, while they're uh, gathering consent from parents to offer this training to students, we're also going to, in concert with that, offer uh, QPR training to parents. Um, so that's exciting that they're going to help push that out. Um, and we're also going to um, try to offer some professional development opportunities for staff right after school at Algonquin. Um, so Shannon's been working with um, Jennifer on that. Um, we've been integrating Christina a little bit more into our intake process, which has been very helpful. Um, much like when you call a doctor's office, it's not the doctor answering the phone, but there's somebody to sort of triage the phone call and um, collect basic information. Um, what that's meant for us is that we now have a new weekly meeting where it's Christina, Megan, and myself, and we review any new uh, service inquiries and we make decisions about uh, what to do next and what our, our what the best protocol is, response protocol is um, for serving that individual. We are updating and revising our job descriptions currently. And then also uh, we just submitted a, a grant proposal to the Southboro Community Fund uh, on Friday to try um, bringing in some outside speakers. Um, as you all know, we have some great workshop offerings, but have struggled to uh, with attendance at times. And we thought that if we had a more robust offering that, you know, every month we had a workshop or a, uh, an educational offering that we could provide the community, um, it might uh, draw some more interest. 
So, um, so we've submitted a grant proposal for two speakers, um, and then we have some other um, funding options um, to consider for some speakers later on in the year. So, um, so that's really the highlights that I wanted to share with you all. As you can see, there's some upcoming dates, curriculum night tomorrow, um, outreach for Heritage Day. Thank you also for anybody who's signed up to help with that. Um, we are supposed to have a QPR training on the 27th. Again, we struggle with the attendance, enrollment, um, and then I'm excited. Uh, the local youth and family service departments are all doing for the second time. Last year was our first time doing it, but all of the departments are getting together on uh, October 26th, the Needham, and we are uh, really putting together a very cool day where people get to network with each other. We get to do a, a department showcase where we get to share how we're similar and how we're different. And uh, we'll all eat lunch together. And then in the afternoon, we'll break out by different disciplines. So we'll have a group of clinicians meeting with one another, a group of prevention folks, and, um, and then a group of uh, administrative support folks meeting with each other too. So looking forward to that. I've talked a lot. I don't know if anybody has questions about anything I just said. Will we have access to the strategic plan that went with the um, the federal grant? The drug-free communities grant? Yeah. Yes. In fact, I think it might um the challenge we have because we have no money we have no website um so i can look actually if you give me a second it might already be shared out um but if not the second thing we plan to do with those funds after hiring a coordinator is to we've already purchased a url so it's encompassedcoalition.org um, right now, if you type that in, it's going to take you to the town of North Bros, uh website. And that's what I was just going to look up to see if, if the, um, the plan is already shared there. Um, no, we have, we have different data points being shared on there but not the the plan yet um okay. but yes but i believe that, that will be that will be um publicized at some point in time i believe so probably yeah. in a, a very um high level overview form yeah. it, it, the application itself was I want to say it was a couple of hundred pages long, so it yes. was a big undertaking. <laughs> yeah. um, so I probably will be shared in a different format. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, I think we can go into the ARPA fund update that you had uh, referred to earlier? Yes. Um, so there, I have to pull up that memo to make sure I review everything here. Okay, so um, was that in the packet? I'm sorry if I don't see I don't think it was. The budget was and the director's report was. Okay. It wasn't. Do you, want, yeah. do you like me to share just for everybody's memory that memo? Or do you, are you guys comfortable you with have me? it? Yeah, here. Oh, can you enable sharing for me? Sure. Okay. All right, can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. So first I outline what we were originally slated to use the funds for. Um, and then I give an update on where things stand with that. And because Interface came in under budget and because we couldn't hire a clinician, we then go into different proposals. So starting with the first item, uh, a an FY25 contract for interface referral service. Um, the select board voted against using ARPA funds for this, but because they want it to go into our operating budget, which is a huge triumph for us. <laughs> We've, let's see, when did we start using interface? in 2020. We've been talking about interface for a really long time, but I think officially our first year using it was Jan or January 1st of 2020, right, right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I might be wrong on that, but, but at any, any rate, the, the fact of the matter is um, we've come to depend on this service. It's become an integral part of our operations um, and the select board felt as though we shouldn't continue to try to patch together funding for something that's become so important, which I really appreciate that standpoint. So they would like us to include this contract in our FY25 budget request. So there's support for it, but they want to uh, find put funding in elsewhere. Um, they were they voted in support for us to replace our reception room furniture, which is very exciting. Um, we really need that. <laughs> Seems like you know, uh, at first glance, a frivolous thing, but it really when you when you take a look at um, what we have going on, it's not. Um, and really important. It's our first uh, point of contact for a lot of people and we need it to be as comfortable as possible and inviting as possible. So we've started wheels in motion on that, which is great. Um, I'm gonna skip over number thir uh, three for a minute, which is the community resource guide. Um, everything else they supported. So tablets for staff to use. Um, it's very hard for us to balance a laptop on our lap while we're working with people if we need them to complete forms or doing intake documents. Um, we also do a lot of work out in the community and in the school, so this will enable us to um, complete notes. So we're looking at tablets that have a stylus and a built-in uh, keyboard in the, um, the case. So we're working with our IT department on identifying what those will be. Um, therapeutic sensory items they were in favor of. Um, 1700 for workshop materials as outlined here in this, um, this grid. So there's even some flexibility built in here because you can see the total here is less than 1700, but they voted on that round number for us, which is great because prices change all the time. Um, so all of those things that I just talked about were all, they all voted to support those. Um, so going back to the community resource guide, they loved what Northboro put together. I included a link there for them to see it. Some of them have even seen the hard copies of that resource guide. Have any of you seen it? Are any mm. of you familiar with it? No. Okay. Um, so they used their ARPA funds in Northboro to put together this resource guide. So hard copies were sent home to all residents, and then it lived online um, where it would be updated regularly um, with a plan. I think their plan was to then uh, remind people that it exists online. They weren't going to reprint it every time they updated it. Um, and, 
Um, so this proposal really, I got to give credit to the health department on it. They had applied for a grant through a different um, organization and they didn't receive funding for that grant, but they had this whole proposal already put together and it was going to include collaborations with the library, the senior center, the rec department, our department. Um, so everybody's you know, collaboratively contributing to this. Um, so the select board was in favor of such a resource existing, but really uh, felt the price tag was too high um, and we're, we're more interested in seeing something live online that could be updated easily, which we totally appreciate because things become outdated pretty quickly um, or can't, you know, numbers change. And then all of a sudden the whole thing is not the whole thing, but it needs updating pretty quickly. So they wanted to see it live online and that if something was mailed home to residents, it would be a postcard, for example, with a QR code on it so that all residents would receive notification that it exists and have something that would direct them to that. Um, so they wanted us to go back to the drawing board to modify this proposal and see if we could get the price down to something that felt more they were more comfortable with. I've had a chance to meet with the uh, public health nurse over at the the health department who really spearheaded this, Taylor West. We we do feel as though for equal access and equity um, that it's important to have some hard copies available for people because not all not all residents have smartphones and not all residents uh, use the internet or know how to use a QR code. And so it's important that we have um, a way for people to access that. Um, but we are thinking that we would limit the number of full copies. We wouldn't do like a high gloss magazine kind of copy that was really, um, if you look, if you have an opportunity to see Northborough's guide, it's a very snazzy community guide. Um, but we would do something more basic um, in terms of having printed materials and invest more resources into the online version and whatever the postcard that we would send home would probably um, our thinking would be it would have a QR code so that people could access it through the internet but it would also list locations where people could pick up a hard copy so we would leave hard copies in certain locations at the senior center for example at town hall um, the library those sorts of sites so we would list out where people could go and access their hard copy and um, include a phone number for people. If they aren't able to get to those locations, they can call and we will send one home to them in the mail. Um, so we were trying to figure out ways to um, still maintain that access. So and we also still want to have it translated. Um, the good thing about having something live online is that it's much, much more easily translated than a hard copy would be. Um, a lot of websites, you just click on a drop down menu and can translate the information um, in however many languages you want. Um, so that's a consideration of ours. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? I can't remember. Um, so currently we're working on trying to identify the best service slash graphic designer to work with on this um, and get a better understanding of what a quote would be for the work with these changes made. <clears throat> so I, I don't do. know. Oh, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Sarah, how, and like since Northboro has already done this, Mm -hmm. And it's kind of the same catchment area and service area. Could are you just kind of reinventing that, um, or was well, a lot of a lot of them are Northboro specific? Yes, there's going to be some overlap, but yeah. a lot of them are Northboro specific. Um, okay. So every department in Northboro contributed to this. Mm -hmm. 
explaining, you know, the different departments and services that are available, who to okay. call, who to contact. Um, so there would be some changes, but we honestly would be borrowing a lot of the same information for sure. Yeah. Uh, just FYI, Advocates is also doing a, a, a community service guide. So there might be some uh, sharing Borrowing information. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's and it would be point. nice. I mean, if it does live online and people mm -hmm. are accessing it, at some point in time, it would be great to have this kind of a searchable thing mm -hmm. where, you know, you put in, um, I need mental health services for bipolar disorder, or I need help with my gas bill or whatever. You know, um, I I don't know how hard it, it is to do that, but I think that there definitely is the online technology to do that. So you don't have to scroll through pages and pages yes. of stuff Category. trying to find out where, yeah, what you need. So Okay. I'm going to stop sharing because I think we can talk without looking at all those words. Are you um, planning to put a link to it or some sort of note about its existence on the collaborating department's websites? We probably, yeah, we probably would. Yep. Did they give you an, any idea what uh, the budget was for this or what they... No, so just to come they in. They just said 16,000 feels like too much. Come back to us with these changes. Okay. So, so be it's, it's on us now to to rework the proposal with, with suggestions they had, other suggestions people have, feedback from Northboro and other communities on how their process went, things they would do differently. Um, yeah. So... So it's I it's a little bit of a slower going process because we we want it to work um, and be um, be useful. Um, so we're taking the time to talk to different uh, designers and explore different online options um, for how this how this might work best. To limit the number of hard copies, do you think people would be opposed to using one in the library? Like we have it bound in binders and you, the library has several copies and people would just go and use it at the library? I think that's a good choice. I think like, challenge I we privacy. run. In... I don't know if people want to do all that in a public yeah. place. But I mean, or also, I was also thinking as if, I don't know if the library staff could help people get online because they have those computers there. I so think the challenge is, is that not everybody is mobile. Um, not everybody will be visiting the library. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, the argument could be made one, one resident might say, well, you know, this person has access to it anytime they want in the privacy of their home. I should also have that same equal opportunity it's a tricky yeah. with yeah. anything, you know, you try to think of every possibility. Um, right. So I, I thinking, think it, even at the senior center, people go and they're there for a long, long longer periods yeah. of time. So if we had these locations around town that people frequented, I understand if people are not mobile, but if people frequented senior center, the library, mm -hmm. whatever town hall, like any of these places, we could provide a couple nice laminated hard copies for them to use and take notes or whatever. I don't know. It's just a way that we might be able to limit the number. Of yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, Taylor yeah. and I, I mean, I feel like, well, the library. Might... Sorry, go ahead, Nancy. No. <laughs> I was just saying they could keep one at the reference desk, like Karen was saying, that doesn't get checked out. And then if they had a couple more copies that could circulate, at mm -hmm. least people could choose, mm -hmm. you know, do they want to look at it there? And there's always one there. And then there's a couple that can leave too. Yeah. 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 When we were thinking about having copies, it was a really limited number. Um, so I, I think we are no longer thinking because there's still going to be the printing cost of getting something to everybody 
in postcard yeah. form to to let them know it exists. So, so it's a, a juggling act. And I'm not a graphic designer at all. So I'm kind of I don't even know. I'm I'm figuring things out based off of um the work that other people have done already and their suggestions on who to talk to and and I have Taylor helping me with this as well as some of the other departments. So it's very helpful. Any other comments on the uh the Sorry, my dogs are barking, but uh, I think somebody just crashed their car <laughs> outside. Oh. <laughs> I know I heard it, some bad, some bad noise. But anyway, um, I just was wondering what was going to happen with the excess um, ARPA funds now that we'll be reducing um, the cost of the resource guide as well as the... Um, uh, the interface. Yep. Um, so as you re may recall, I had in my original proposal that went to town administration accounted for every penny of the amount, but was given the feedback that in doing that, it diminishes our requests some and sort of had the appearance that we were trying to use every penny versus being thoughtful about what's most useful, if that makes sense. Um, so there was already, even if they approved everything that was in that proposal, there was still gonna be a balance of 3000 something. Um, so we did not have a conversation about that. I do know other boards and committees and departments had to change their plans because certain um, certain projects didn't work out or and so I think those funds ultimately I mean I need to revisit that um, but I think ultimately the the select board has a number of um, things they're considering um, to use those funds for, not necessarily related to our department, but to the town in general. So, so I think at least with other departments that I know that haven't been able to use the ARPA funds that they originally received or were approved for, it went back to sort of a general fund for all sorts of purposes. But I, I don't know that they've made votes on any of that stuff. I think they're just considering ways that those funds will be used so there they'll be under the discretion of the select board to just re kind of distribute at some I point in time so I don't okay know if so is there anything other wants that you might have or have you well um It's kind of related to the next, is is the budget the next item on the agenda? Yes. Okay. So, um, we can go ahead into that. <laughs> yeah, I guess related to that, one of the things that we have identified that's become an ongoing need is marketing materials. Um, this is challenging because we are a department that does not make any money. Um, so a department like the rec department who brings in quite a bit of money has the flexibility to purchase things to give out to people, um, when, when doing outreach, we have some things, but those were purchased through ARPA, which is not a, not a fund that will be around forever. Um, in fact, you know, we've pretty much spent down all of the funds that were earmarked for marketing materials. But given that we've been doing outreach on a regular basis, um, and, you know, I know that some, I've received some feedback from others that it's nice when you're able to give out things to people, even if it's a magnet, a pen, you know, if you're doing something with kids, something squishy, <laughs> 
Um, uh, we, you know, you guys will see at Heritage Day, we bought some nicer things. Um, we're going to use the Wheel of Fun, uh, which was what we call it. It's a, a spinny wheel that will have one little sliver carved out for a prize and they get to choose an SYFS nicer item. Um, so, but all of that stuff costs quite a bit of money um, and it's not something we have in our operating budget. So, um, but even if we used, even if whether it was ARPA money that we used it for, uh, or actually I shouldn't say, or our operating budget, because if it's in our operating budget, we have money on an ongoing basis. I just don't know, you know, how taxpayers feel about the, the funds going to marketing materials like stress balls and things like that. Um, maybe it's fine, but um, well, the more I, outreach I, we do, the more of that stuff we need. Yeah, I consider that part of outreach more than marketing. You know, you're you're trying to, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, increase the uh, catchment area for people to know what is available. So sorry, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, also, I agree because you're not actually trying to sell anything. You're trying to make people aware of a free town service. Hmm. it's tricky because that stuff is it can be very expensive so if you look at like stainless steel water bottles you know and there's always this argument of like should we be giving we could we could easily buy tchotchkes you know like here's here's a i can't even think of a, you know stress balls i think are a good example but they become like tattered and you know, whatever. They're kind of a, a little bit of a throwaway item. The kids love them. They're attractive. You know, people come to our table, silicone bracelets, that sort of stuff. Um, and then there's the argument to be made that, you know, if you're going to give stuff away, you should have some nicer things to give away too. And that it's a little bit of both, you know, a balance between. And so I just really struggle with, you know, with that end of things. Um, and maybe it's just because, you know, that's maybe, maybe this is more of a personal thing on my end that I need somebody to talk me out of this, but, but just to, to spend money from our operating budget on buying stainless steel water bottles just is a hard swallow for me. You know, I don't know if that makes sense to people. Um, no, it does. And, and it won't go very far, you know, our budget won't go very far if we're trying to have some nicer things to give away to people too at times. And so we've got to really like balance what is it we're buying and be really intentional about it. But I don't know about you, Laura, did you feel like at the outreach at Finn, I almost felt like the bags were a waste because like everyone's like, they got so excited and it was like a tease and I felt like something should have been in the bag besides a coat, like a piece of paper. And maybe the adults brought it home and read it, but I'm almost like we either give bags and put stuff in it besides paper, or we don't give bags. Well, the other yeah, thing I know about the bags, sorry, I was just going to say the other thing about the bags is really, it's not even, we know that people are going into the classrooms and collecting things. So it's a little bit of a sneaky thing on our part because people need somewhere to put their stuff. We just happen to put our stuff in there ahead of time. Um, so it's always not, it's not really been for the kids as much as it's been for, hey, parents, are you, are your hands all tied up? Here's a bag. And we happen right. to have our stuff in there for you. Um, but that's a perfect, sorry, Laura, go ahead. Oh, no, go no. Ahead. I was just, I, um, I understand the point that you're making, Karen. And maybe part of that is a, uh, because that we were at Finn, just the little ones and they, of course, they're so excited about like, this really? bag. <laughs> um, but I agree with what Sarah said earlier too, which about it being um, an issue of visibility. And I think that is really important. And um, coming out of the outreach event, I did find like I, it was so many people that shock of recognition on their face when you say to them, 
these are free services for you. And they were like, oh, really? Like they, yeah, like they didn't, they didn't know that that was there. So Mm -hmm. um, I do think that maybe there's a way to find a happy medium of not spending so much on, you know, something like a fancy water bottle. But, but yeah, I I think what Sarah said about it being an issue of of visibility and outreach, um, that definitely rings true for me, I think. Yeah, I'm just I, I, trying to, I liked the outreach point, but I just wasn't sure if there's anything else besides the bag. I don't know. I didn't see any of the parents using the bags for anything, but maybe they were. Did- I saw parents at Neri coming back with them with other things. And um, and I, I saw somebody using it a couple days later. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Which I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, I, yeah. yeah, it's hard because I, I don't want stuff that's going to go into a landfill. No. I was in marketing for a long time. We used to get all kinds of tchotchkes and what a waste. Like I was at a wedding and they gave sunglasses and a hair tie and all the, you know, beer th- glass. And I was like, I don't want this stuff. Like, you know, I have stuff. So I think we have to be really clever about what, is maybe a useful item, a magnet for the fridge or your wherever it sticks. I don't know, a sticker. But I do think people were really appreciative. <laughs> we we joke around. We think about that all the time. We're very, very, it's very important to us not to give away items that are going to just get tossed. So we're, we always think about what's a, a functional item. And we joke about the prospect of giving away chip clips because that's a, that's one we see all the time. And totally. somebody's crying because they've had a really rough day and they turn to their bag of chips and then go, Oh, that's right. I should call youth and family services, <laughs> you know, because that's where we find our comfort sometimes. Or how about a little Kleenex? <laughs> tissues or something you know yeah, I know but th- so you guys can appreciate like yeah the two sides of the coin that like we we need things to attract people to our tables but we also don't want to give away we don't want to contribute to <laughs> landfill issues and and have stuff that people don't want or you know I, I went to something uptown here where I live and the the local urgent care center was giving away tape measures with their logo on it and I was like this is so bizarre like you know I guess that's cool but I, nothing about tape measures reminds me of urgent of care. my urgent yeah. care center <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder, well, then that's why we wanted to do some more you know more expensive things but not so expensive where it felt frivolous and I think to Laura's point the fact that we have free services and the fact that what are those services is probably as important as getting a stainless steel thing with South Bird Youth and Family Services logo on it where half the people are still probably like what is that okay mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know mm-hmm. um, and it's it's that balance between not just getting the the name out there but getting the fact that what are the services yep yep anyway we don't have tonight we don't have to debate what we're buying for marketing <laughs> materials at all really um the question on the table was is there anything else we want to use arpa money for which made me think about our operating budget also because when i think about what needs we have that is one of them mm-hmm. um that's something we're going to run out of what we just recently purchased we couldn't even give out one of each giveaway item to just the school open houses because we would have gotten we wouldn't have even been had enough um so i have to excuse myself for one second i'll be right back sorry about that talk amongst yourselves (laughs) (laughs) there was there is a big car accident right outside my house yeah it took down a telephone pole there's uh a lot of vehicles i know but you didn't lose power no but i it, i i definitely heard it i was like i've only heard that a couple other times there's a nasty little turn in our right in front of our house and i'm like oh no not again <laughs> that sound of metal hmm. um 
Anyway, yeah. talk amongst ourselves. What do we want to talk about? <laughs> Can't really go into the budget yet. No. Well, Did I will the stress balls were a huge hit at Woodward at the outreach. Mm-hmm. Those yeah. definitely got the kids to like pull their parents over. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'll take one of those. Yeah, but we no, didn't have that many. Great. So like, no, yeah, we ran out pretty early. I think oh, then we, had, we had two little Lay's, Hawaiian Lay's, and they kept trying to take those. Yes. <laughs> Christina bought those. It, totally. She went to the dollar store and was like, it just makes us look more fun. And so <laughs> we put <laughs> them on every once in a while. Many times, oh, no, sweetie, that has to stay here. Oh, no, sweetie, we can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can... With regard to ARPA funding, it, it sounds like marketing is one thing we've identified as a need. Maybe before I say anything about ARPA funding, is there anything else that you guys think is a need that we should have on the table, whether it's for ARPA or the operating budget? I think that makes sense for this part of the discussion. Well, when you were talking about um, bringing speakers in, my thought was, do you have a way to tape those and make them available virtually um, to residents? Yes. Um, Sorry, I lost my pen. Hold on one second. Sorry, I muted myself. No, it's all likelihood <laughs> we would be able to work with Southboro Access Media to oh, okay. do that. I think the challenge is that for some, for the two speakers that we put in the community fund um, grant, this is proprietary for them. This is their business. And so my guess is for the two of them anyway, that they probably would not allow to be recorded. To- yeah, which is unfortunate, but but of course, like, why would anybody hire them to come speak if it's just out there on the internet for anybody to watch? Right. Yeah. Um, but so I can't speak to that part of it, but um, we encounter that quite often where people um, don't allow it. Yeah. Um, one of them, though, which we plan to bring in during the dead of winter um, for this reason, can only do it on Zoom. Uh, for a webinar. Um, and I know that that's not, you know, everybody's like so zoomed out. Um, but also, it works really well for some people. We're all here on a Zoom meeting right now. Um, it's also something that will be recorded. Um, so so that, that does increase people's access um, for that reason. Um, but the other one I know for sure, he uh, is an in-person presenter and I think probably doesn't allow recording. But. Okay, yeah, that was my thought. Was like, oh, do you need video equipment or more technological advances there? But yeah, you, uh, yeah. Fortunately, if we ever needed something like that, our Southboro Access Media um, group would be. Um, it's a win-win situation because they're always looking for things to cover and to feature on the Southboro's uh, local channel. Um, they have all of that. We, the, the key to getting them to be able to do that is making sure we get it on their calendar as soon as possible. So <laughs> where are you, you going to hold these there? Are they going to be at a school? Um, probably we, the, the trouble is we can't even really move forward with planning either of them until we hear from the community fund if, if they've approved the, the funding. So, and unfortunately we don't learn that until mid-October-ish, maybe even a little later. So so really this is stuff that would be happening later in the year. Um, we do have, maybe you guys remember, we have some funding left over from the Cultural Arts Council for a program, uh, Mindful Art. I don't know if anybody remembers that, um, but that's being rescheduled for October. So we're working with um, uh, Chelsea Steele right now. Chelsea Steele is formerly, I can't even remember her, le- Bradway. Right. Um, Chelsea Bradway. She has a new a new space um, and we're hoping to sort of, um, we, we were working with uh, art therapist Kim Welch 
and um, she would come in. It would be sort of a paint night atmosphere um, for probably the 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 folks that would most likely be drawn to it are moms, perhaps uh, friends coming for a paint night atmosphere, but with like a therapeutic twist. Um, Kim does really awesome work um, and would teach people how to use art to decompress and practice some mindfulness strategies, but in a fun atmosphere with food and, and beverages, no alcoholic beverages in case anyone's wondering, but <laughs> um, so so we're we're trying really hard to finalize those details so that we could push that out um, for October, which is coming fast. So do we just thinking of budget items? Do we need anything more for like the um what is it mental health awareness week? So like we do that every May, right? And then in the culmination the last month. year we the whole month, and then last year we had the little tea lights, and I remember friends had to help and everything. So I'm just wondering if there's some things that we know are going to be ongoing programs that we want yep. to fund. We do have, let me just pull up our current, oh, the current budget is in the packet. So um, I'll probably get to it here faster. Um, let's see. Um, no, nope, that's the wrong. But all of our program supply line uh, which is $2,000 or I'm looking at the wrong thing. The program supply line from our budget was all dedicated to mental health awareness month last year. So certainly if we wanted to do things differently, we do have funding there. Um, we tend to do different things every year. So we haven't reliably done the same thing. I know that there was a lot of interest and, and um, excitement around doing a luminary event. And I don't, I don't know if it met our expectations next year, but what we've learned about doing anything is that you've got to do it for a few years for it to take root. So, um, so that's something we could consider, but it's a pretty good chunk of money already. Um <laughs> The only other thing I can think of, Sarah, is do we have a uh, intern yet? Or nope. is, okay, because it would be you could I don't know if they would, um, but a stipend for uh, an intern might make it more attractive. You're reminding me that that was also part of the conversation with the select board. Um, they were really interested in figuring out how they also, like you guys said, this is a problem. We know that you guys rely on interns. Um, we need to figure this out. So uh, a couple of them started investigating um, what that might look like for us, not just through ARPA funding, but perhaps in our operating budget as well. So um, so I have a little bit of legwork too, which is to figure out what a, a going rate is for somebody who's doing a year long internship for 20 hours a week. Um, and that's new territory. I can help you with that. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be yeah. great. I'll, I'll ask Zoe, cause she has a couple um uh, peers in her program that have that would be very helpful stipends but it definitely makes it more attractive and I think in all fairness that you know they're dedicating half of their you know work hours to mm -hmm. helping an organization and it makes them feel more valued too you know I mean going to some place where you're just working and you know, obviously you're getting in time and experience, but a lot of people are giving up their real jobs and, mm -hmm. or have to pay for childcare or something else. So it definitely- oh, I remember I was working 40 hours a week and doing 20 hours at the internship yeah. <laughs> because I couldn't I, give up my job because, yeah. well, but it, I, I might've been able to if, if, um, if I had a paid internship. Yep. So just 
just a thought. I, I'm I'm a yeah. strong proponent of that. So are there any other needs to put on the table or ideas? whether it's for ARPA or the operating budget. Do you need any more laptops, updated laptops? That would come through our IT department and not okay. our budget. All right. We'll certainly be chatting about it on our end. We just recently found out the calendar for when these were due and they're not the budget requests from departments aren't due until November 22nd. I think that's another piece of this item on the, on the agenda, right? The timeline. Um, so um, they're not due until just before Thanksgiving. I'm pretty sure it's the 22nd, just before Thanksgiving. Um, yes, the 22nd, they're due at noon that day. So we will actually have more opportunity to talk about this. So it's really preliminary. Um, so um, so I guess going back to ARPA, so I'm, I'm reworking the community resource guide with the health department working on that and we'll have to be going back to them anyway. Um, I can ask the question of what happens to the rest of the funds um, that were sort of approved for our department's use or for mental health purposes, what happens to that? Um, we haven't talked about that. I can certainly let them know that we always could use more marketing and outreach materials. Um, and so it could be on them to decide if they want to give us an amount towards that to, um, tied us over. Um, and then with regard to the budget, I wrote down supplies for mental health awareness month. You know, if anybody is interested, we could theoretically, um, or we could talk a little bit more about, you know, what pieces, Karen, I know friends, friends might be interested in being involved in the luminary idea also. But so Mental Health Awareness Month supplies, an uh, intern stipend, and marketing materials were the three things that I heard. So I'll probably work on a, a budget proposal draft and share that with you guys at um, if our next meeting, hopefully. All right. Does that cover the budget discussion or was there anything else you wanted to add? We were talking about the reviewing the current budget and anything new for um, fiscal year 25. Um, employee training, the salaries are what they are. We don't have much, you know, wiggle room with that. Um, Employee training seminars will likely stay the same um, that sufficiently meets our needs. Software, we will need to be in touch with um, Simple Practice and my senior center to monitor the costs associated with that to make sure that what goes into our uh, budget request co sufficiently covers that. That also, would include um, Propio, which is the language interpretation service. Um, so we'll need to make sure, honestly, that one's hard to budget for because you only pay for it when you use it. So right now we have a very small amount in there. Um, and even with our work over at uh, the Red Roof for language, I'm sorry, for the refugee families, um, we only ended up spending about $50 associated with, with that service. Um, contracted services, again, that, that whole line item goes to our 
um, the super the woman that we contract out our supervision and consultation services for. So Rona provides me with clinical supervision for my caseload. And then uh, we also meet with her um, to go over case consultations every other week. And she's also available to us in the event of a, an emergency. We can co consult with her on, on that. She also helps us with some of our, our reporting and our assessments too. Um, so that line item goes all to her. So um, I will need to check with her that her rates have not changed or won't be changing for the next fiscal year. I don't think they will since they just changed last year. Um, office supplies, generally that amount meets our needs. Um, program supplies, as I said, um, mostly goes to mental health awareness month. Occasionally Shannon looks to utilize some funds for a workshop, um, or for youth council or trying to think of a miscellaneous, but something something related to a program that she's doing. Um, but by and large, that's the biggest thing that that line item goes towards. Um, and then mileage um, is there. Um, and that one, that one's always tricky to predict how much. We base it off of the previous year's usage. If you're looking at the budget sheet now, you'll see that we spent very little in um, FY21 and, and FY2020. That was because of the pandemic. We weren't really traveling anywhere for a while um, and doing a lot of things remotely. So um, so really, I mean, just, just to reflect on what's currently in the budget and if there would be any changes, um, the biggest changes so far would be interface referral service, which would go under contracted services, I think. Um, and then any, any of these other changes we just talked about. All right. Anything else before we move on to outreach? Um, so next is outreach opportunities. And I have a question. Has the, um, it, have I just missed it? But ha has the October Heritage Day um, gone out on Sign Up Genius? Yes, it has. And it's full. Um, so thank you to everybody who we have staff covering some of the time slots and actually we have our departments kind of covering two tables one for the department itself and then encompass our coalition is going to also be there so we're covering that um table as well which will be right next door um and from what i understand christina has that information but that that has been fully covered which is great um is that the only thing you were asking about, Lauren? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, that was, I somehow I missed that email. Or I signed up for it and don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. There's always room for more, though. You know? um, so if you happen to be wanting to go to Heritage Day anyway and would like to cover the table for a little while, the more the merrier. Were there other outreach opportunities coming up? Um, I think we were talking about maybe Finfall Festival, right, Sarah? We were think yeah, so actually, I think the reason this is on the agenda is not just to share upcoming opportunities, but to discuss. It should be, it should be, I remember saying this during our agenda setting meeting, that this should be on the agenda every month because outreach is so important that we really appreciate you guys offering any ideas. And so it's an opportunity to generate ideas for things to, um, to do in the upcoming months. Yeah. So uh, we talked about like maybe Finfall Festival because orientation was, you know, the parents are so new and they're so focused on getting their little ones through the door. And maybe at Finfall Festival, it's more of a casual atmosphere. And while the kids are running around occupied by like Mr. McCabe or whoever, um that 
you know, parents might be able to come up to the table and talk more or whatever. So. Do you know what the date is for that? Um, we had that in our last meeting, uh, or our agenda study meeting. So maybe that was. So we don't have, we'll have to actually reach out to the school and ask if we can invite ourselves. Um, so at this stage in the game, I think we're just generating a list of potential opportunities right. and then okay. we would we would then go ahead and reach out to whoever's in charge of organizing that to see if we can make it happen do we still do the halloween party uh the the rack one? Oh, trunk or treat so they trunk don't treat. Yes. oh yeah that's right <laughs> how can i forget trunk or treat i oh know my gosh. we have so, so much fun with that yeah, so um, we still do that. Mm -hmm. um, I could do outreach at uh, open house at the preschool. Which do you is have an open house at the preschool? We do have an open house at the preschool um, for the parents to come in. And I do know a lot of them are new to town, um, probably don't know very much about the services. We could um, just, I could just, put out material on the front table or something and suggest that people take it. Um, but I know we have, you know, probably 50 families in town. So it might be a nice way to get the newbies in the loop. It's mm -hmm. a great idea. What about the possibility of, um, doing something at the library with some of those programs that they run, or I know that they used to run for like on a Saturday morning or something, you know, for the kids, like they have magicians come in, they have different um, types of programs that they're running. Um, maybe they would allow a small little, little setup with a person to <clears throat> be offering information. I just saw that the poor pickling. Yeah, it got canceled. Pickling, the workshop was canceled because not enough interest. I know there was at one the library. I was like, oh, last week. no one signed I, up for pickling. Oh, I I would have gone. <laughs> I ferment veggies. I could have pickled stuff. I feel like maybe if they had offered it to adults, they would have gotten know, more right? participation. <laughs> oh, it was a kids pickling. Thing? It was. Oh. It was for kids. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. love pickles. Um, I know that there's a big, they, I got a postcard for the two town programs regarding the multifamily homes, the MBTA stuff. And I think you'll get a lot of people there. So I don't know if they would allow us to have an outreach, but I do know that there's a great deal of community interest. And I do think that we'll get people um, present. So. Is that the, um, I'm not going to come up with the right words. Uh, it's like a. The MBTA communities program. Yeah, it's a presentation that's being put on. Um, There's they called it a something, something session. Yeah. But, um, okay. Any other ideas? There's other a um, there's a college fair at Algonquin on October fourth in the gym. Like, I wonder if they would let us have a table maybe outside the gym entrance. Okay. I think Chestnut Hill Farm offer some programs too um i think don't they i'm smiling, I'm smiling laura because <laughs> there was one saturday that shannon christina and i came and we did outreach with goats um, <gasps> at Hill farm and it was 
we looked at each other and we all said, what the heck are we doing right now? But it was so fun. Did you do goat yoga? It it was like for kids, it was like, come and pet goats. Is it the race the goats? The race the goat day or something? No, I don't even remember. that anymore. Had a funny, funny name, but (laughs) we really enjoyed ourselves. I don't even know if we... How many people we talked to? We talked to goats that day. We asked if they were doing okay and if they needed to talk to anybody. <laughs> um, it was a really funny outreach opportunity. One one we still talk about. Right. Well, this feels like a really good starting point. So we'll explore some of these options and, and let you guys know we do appreciate um i was thinking about about this today that unlike other boards and committees um although i don't know because i don't have anything to compare it to but we do ask more of you guys because we can't be everywhere at every point and um also with staff working their regular work hours and needing to fit in appointments and things like that it can be hard to also do outreach at at um, times that are outside normal work schedules, so we try to do as much as we can. But um, we really appreciate you guys offering your time where you can. It's very helpful. Um, so thank you for what you've been able to do up to this point and any efforts you make in the future too. One more, th- one more thought. I'm not sure if there's opportunities, but what about anything if the Pilgrim Church associated with the food pantry. Do they ever have any opportunities where something's open and that, well, I know like November 4th and 11th, we're doing our scouting for food. And so there's going to be a lot of families there. I just didn't know if in conjunction with like the Girl Scouts or with the scouting for food, or we could join forces and do something. Yeah. With the food pantry too. If you think know. there's an event, so to speak, that we can be at, um, where there's a congregation of people, then I mean, the Pinewood good. Derby for Boy Scouts is yeah. at Pilgrim Church, literally like they're there from 8 a.m. till 4 yeah. p.m. And there's people in and out all day. They sell concessions. Yeah. There's all these young families and a lot of them have young kids and they're new to town. And so uh-huh. I don't know, it's just some things to piggyback onto this scouting and it's just other people that they're there for those interested you know groups Mm -hmm. okay great all right so um next we have the friends update um karen longest friends update i've seen in a long time this is busy <laughs> month for them. I'll keep it short. I know it's getting late. Okay, so Heritage Day table. Kathy is going to um, come through for us, I believe, like she always does, or Kathy Cook, and get some Patriots tickets, I think, or something, Patriots or a concert or whatever. We're going to try to raffle that off to raise some money because we talked about this whole thing about, you know, selling stuff. Once again, it costs a lot of money and... Um, so we thought if people are walking by, who wouldn't drop in a couple bucks to get a raffle to win a ticket to a, either Patriots or some kind of concert or whatever. So she's working on that. And then also um, Leslie, who's on Friends, um, her husband sells maple syrup. And so I guess every year he sells the maple syrup and he's going to do that. And all the proceeds are going to come to Friends as well. So that's two nice. things at Heritage Day table. Um, what's next? Oh, the 84 chapter movement. Um, that is a peer led Shannon came to us. It's a peer led group that, um, and the 84 stands for the 84% of youth in Massachusetts who do not smoke or vape. And so they asked friends to be a fiscal agent for them. So basically it's a peer led group, but if they did any fundraising or any monetary stuff were involved financially, the friends organization would be able to take money, deposit it for them or whatever. And so we agreed to do that. And Kathy can have a separate bucket for their money or whatever. So. Okay. Um, 
uh, a South Bay Community Fund grant application to support refugee families. Kathy Cook was supposed to get that. Sarah, did you know if she did that? Okay. Because <clears throat> we know there's going to be ongoing needs for refugee families. So she was going to reach out to the South Bay Community Fund to see if we could start uh, get a grant for that. So, excuse me. Um, and then... We had a meeting, Leslie, myself, and Sarah and Christina, um, two days ago now, or was it yesterday? I can't remember. It was just yesterday. Oh, it was just <laughs> yesterday. Okay. So we wanted to talk about partnering with potentially, there's a couple, you know, friends of the rec, maybe kinder group, food pantry. We see a lot of overlap in a lot of our, um, you know, friends of rec raises money for their rec camps but we also have our camp scholarships. So we're trying to see if there was a way to streamline it. This is all just in the beginning works and we're gonna reach out to Jolene Chapsky, which she is the head of uh, Friends of Southboro Rec. And so we're gonna just meet with her, Leslie and myself and see, is there a better way? Maybe we keep camp rec camps for them and then we do extended day and um, what's the other one? We get free weeks from the Fay School, and actually okay. St. Mark's just started a camp this summer and is likely to offer free weeks for their camp as well. So there's no no fundraising needed for that, but Extended Day would be the, the other thing. camp that we send a lot of kids to. Yeah, so we're going to meet with Jolene, start just, we don't want to duplicate efforts. We also want to make sure we're doing this in the best way possible. Why? Because people get a lot of questions. Why are you raising money for camp scholarships, and why are they also raising raising money for camp scholarships. So maybe we can make this more efficient and partner together and at other events too. So we're going to meet with Jolene on that. Um, I'm going to reach out. I called Beverly Dance, who is the chair of the um, Southboro Food Pantry, because um, we do this whole Winter Wishes program, obviously, and we give gift cards. And I reached out to her, but she had a very awesome reply. It's like, I'm meditating and I have very little time to talk on my phone and I will be out of pocket till September 25th. I was like, sure, no problem. Go back to meditating. So um, I'll meet with her when she gets back, but we believe they only give out gift cards to like grocery stores, Roach Brothers or Stop and Shop or whatever. But I just wanted to reach out to them just to have a fun, friendly conversation, see what they are doing for the South Road in terms of the holiday season and talk about what we're doing with winter wishes and just make sure all the needs of our residents are being met. So we're going to talk to Beverly. Um, and then we might look into partnering with um, kinder group to see if there's a way at Santa day, if we can get some, raise some money with them, our friends can be part of that. So these are all in the beginning of the stages of partnering, but you know, these are all just things long-term and if we can partner with more people and have more efficient, better fundraising, why not? And then winter wishes, we're also discussing potentially um, maybe changing how instead of all gift cards and making crazy and Christina has to do all that, maybe we do some more monetary and have people just be able to donate money instead with like, I don't know, we haven't finalized this, but maybe we have a QR code and it says, you know, girl, Barbie house, blah, 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 $50 or 20, you know, and people can donate with a thought in their mind that they are getting a Barbie house, but they don't have to go out and buy it or buy a specific gift card. And they can use a QR code to, to maybe we might talk about setting up a Venmo account. So it makes it easier for people to donate. They still know that they're doing good and winter wishes, but, and also Christina sometimes gets what $500 gift cards, like one very generous one. And then how do you break that up to a family? So if we did more monetary donations and we could easily farm out like, okay, we'll get these target ones, we'll get these dicks ones or whatever. So, um, so we're just getting some uh, friends by and like Kathy Cook and just, we want to make sure if we change any of this, that everyone's on board. And is that everything? I think so. Um, here is Jay. Yeah, our next meeting will be October 4th. And yeah, does anybody have questions? That all yeah. sounds good. 
Um, so lastly, um, we had talked about having a meeting in person about every six months, and that would be coming up for the October um, meeting. We're proposing an October 10th in-person meeting. Um, does that still appeal to everyone to have an in-person meeting? Um, any objections to it? No, I'm in favor of that. I think it's nice to see the rest of everybody's bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Did we decide if David Joyner was very tall? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was, or he yeah. just was taller than I expected. I've never <laughs> seen him in person, so I have to abstain. But yeah, so we have to have make sure he gets on. <laughs> you have to abstain. <laughs> As if it's a vote. Um, I, I think the only other thing that we talked about, we're a little bit off on our schedule of, we've been historically always have met the second Tuesday of the month. Of course, if we meet on 1010, it will be, you know, three weeks instead of four full weeks, something like that. Um, and that's fine. It's for good reasons that we've had to do that. Um, the other thing I think that we noted when we were talking about 1010 is it's the day after doing outreach at Heritage Day. And if for some reason that was a consideration for people to be having the meeting the next day after having done outreach, but I don't know if that's an issue for anybody. It was just something else that we said, oh yeah. Hey. Oh, you muted yourself, Lauren. thought I just unmuted myself. Um, <laughs> let, let's plan on doing that then. And um, I would look forward to seeing everyone in person and, and uh, meeting Laura in person. Mm-hmm. Are we going to do it at the um, public safety? To be thing? determined, but oh. yes, probably. I just, Christina will have to reach out. Oh, okay. Yeah, so All she'll, right. have to, she'll have to book a space and then we'll keep us posted on where that will be. Um. So, um, can I have a motion for adjournment? A motion to adjourn. <laughs> a second I second thank you um, so um, all in favor we'll do a roll call vote Sarah Micas yes Karen Anglum yes Laura Chioko yes Susan Byer yes Nancy Sutton yes and Lauren Ritchie aye I wonder what you do if someday somebody said no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, okay, I guess we have to keep talking. <laughs> nice to I see everybody. If, I don't know if that's ever happened, Sarah. No, I know. I, I know. can't imagine it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next. Oh, next one month. thing. I don't know if anyone is interested in donating blood tomorrow. I'm just putting it out there that my blood drive happens tomorrow. Tomorrow is ten to four thirty. So every eight weeks, there's a blood mobile at the Southboro Library. And um, they've added another lab tech. So we've taken the full 45 appointments, but they've actually added another lab tech. So we can take walk-ins tomorrow as well. So oh, great. if you're interested, 10 to 4.30, I will be at the library. Nice right. job, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. people. Not myself, but you know. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. All right. Bye. Have a good, Bye. Month. good night, everybody. Bye. Take off. All right.